Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome at my presentation for GitHub Actions. Uh, first of all, I would like to give you some uh, motivation behind my topic, uh, because as we all know, we have Jenkins, we use Travis, and now I'm talking about GitHub Actions. Why uh, we are confused, tell us what to use. Uh, so I will first go through our existing tooling and our uh, and advantages and disadvantages of each of them. And then uh, I will explain what I think we should use GitHub Actions for and why mm, we should use Jenkins and so on. So first, Jenkins, it's an obvious solution for, for us because we have some infrastructure that we can use for Jenkins. Some jobs uh, need to be kicked off uh, manually or, and take some time. And it's really hard to pay for uh, such jobs uh, on uh, someone else's infrastructure. It's usually more expensive and we have more control over the jobs. So Jenkins should definitely stay with us. We need our Jenkins and we like our Jenkins, uh, but there are uh, real issues for developers with Jenkins because it's really hard to set up uh, some job. Uh, it's considerably slower, slower than GitHub Actions. It could be solved, but as of today, it is slower. And uh, it is impossible to uh, change, to play with it for developers. So it's kind of hard to set up uh, a new, new job there. And it's really hard to man maintain the jobs. So uh, if there is new version or now we have pipelines for a few years and no one actually took the time to implement the pipelines for Foreman core yet. And mm, that's because Jenkins is hard. So we should have uh, jobs there, but we should know what jobs are there and we should mm, take care of those jobs. Travis, why we started to use Travis is kind of obvious from the Jenkins disadvantages because that's exactly where the Travis is strong. You can just have one file and define the jobs jobs there. Whatever you define, it, it immediately runs with the code that you pushes, that you push. So we started to use Travis more and more, especially new developers, because they don't understand the Jenkins yet. They like something easier. And that's exactly what Travis has brought to us. Although Travis has uh, discontinued the open source software tier, and they are not going to provide uh, anything above their a really limited uh, free plan. So we mm, will be forced to move um, most of our jobs from Travis uh, or pay to Travis. But given there is the alternative uh, of GitHub Actions, we probably won't pay to Travis. Uh, so given these three, three options, GitHub Actions, are here to rescue us from the uh, Travis and still uh, being easy to set up and easy to, uh, to run. They are for free, but they have some, some limits that uh, I will uh, talk, talk about later what they are, uh, what they mean to us, actually, what I think they mean for us. Uh, there is 
one uh, really hard limit that is organization concurrency limit and we can have uh, only 20 uh, concurrent jobs at the at one time uh, for the whole the foreman organization and that's really low <clears throat> so what are the perks of github actions uh, they're fast uh, they are really fast. So at the moment, GitHub receives the, the push event. It runs runs the job. It's really faster than Travis. The setup of the containers is fast. It's really uh, faster than Travis and definitely faster than uh, than Jenkins because it's it's obvious. It's on GitHub right away. There is no middleman. Uh, you can set it up with the personal repositories. So on my fork, I can run the tests. I don't need to push uh, push to the foreman core. I don't need to create PR just to run, run the tests. Also, I can run the test, whatever test I need in my personal repository before I create even create the, the PR. Uh, they are awesome for quick jobs. So if I need some fast checks, they are perfect for that. Uh, what are the flaws that I see for GitHub Actions? Uh, they are hard to share. Uh, so if I would want to create one GitHub action that uh, or workflow, GitHub workflow that would run for all the plugins in the Foreman repository. It's not easy. It can be done, but it's harder than uh, copy paste the workflow file. And that's kind of a bummer. Uh, every job has a status. That means uh, the green, green or red checks on the PR that you see with every PR. Uh, every job has that, so you can't uh, combine statuses from three jobs to uh, one check. Uh, so you have to you have to have check for every job, and that's uh, kind of messing the. PR status. Uh, you don't have much control over that. Caching uh, can be done, uh, and once set it up correctly, it's very powerful, but it's not uh, easy. And the last flow I see, at least for now, maybe they will uh, mm, they will improve, but the actions are not very robust. They are uh, definitely meant for easy and quick tasks. Uh, they are not meant to be running long, uh, long actions and uh, that you need control over. Just you kick something up and it finishes. However, it finishes. You don't have much control over the environment. You don't have much control over uh, the the process itself. Mm. So, so limited to running in Ubuntu, right? Uh, kinda. The now the easiest uh, easiest option it's to run on Ubuntu. There is uh, just container with Ubuntu, but you can uh, you can somehow override it. But uh, yeah, and you can you can choose Mac. Uh, or Ubuntu, and then if you want some other system, you need Docker in Docker kind of solution, but it's possible to, to do. So yeah, that's another flaw. You can test only on Ubuntu, so. Uh, so where are we using them for now? And what are the 
lessons uh, we've, we've learned. Uh, we are using them in core quite heavily for JavaScript testing. Uh, we work on using them for Rugo, Robocop, uh, Robocop uh, testing on in core, and we are using them in plugins uh, for um, all the tests in Ansible remote execution statistics. Uh, and during the whole Puppet extraction, extraction, they were really, really helpful because uh, I could run, as I said, I could run the uh, whole test suite in them for my personal repository. So without without making any any PRs, I could run run tests in a few simple steps. Uh, all of these the Foreman.js, the Foreman.org, and installer modules. I've been uh, using Travis, and now they are moving to GitHub Actions because, uh, as I mentioned, the open source software tier of Travis is out. So we need to move up, move from Travis to GitHub Actions. Uh, some tips how to use them. So I believe that now you have an idea why you should use GitHub Actions. And I will just show you how to use them so you have an idea when not to use them. And I would really like to encourage people to use GitHub Actions, but uh, have in mind that we have Jenkins and once uh, the job takes too long and you are satisfied with uh, what you are running in the job, you should uh, probably move to Jenkins. So first of all, there is a template repository. So if you want to share some, uh, some action, you can create a, the template action, template workflow in uh, the repository here, Tomer already created one that is uh, checking the single commit. Uh, although it's just uh, just a template, so uh, if you need, for example, uh, plugin name, you would need somehow uh, mark the place where plugin name should be changed, it's not going to change by itself. It's just an uh, example, basically, that you can easily copy over to your repository. So if you have any, any other examples of useful actions, definitely uh, copy them here, uh, although it's basically copy-paste from one plugin to another. Uh, I will show you some uh, examples. This is uh, Puppet ENC, the plugin that I'm extracting, and it's the definition of uh, jobs that uh, I'm running for every PR. First uh, is Rubocop, so I, I'm running Rubocop uh, for every PR is first, and if it fails, I just uh, don't continue with any other testing, just announce fail, and please fix Robocop first. Um, that's easy, easy checkout, set up the um, bundle, and run Robocop. If that works out, I'm running view specs, uh, that I've decided I would like to use. I'm not going to go through them because it's, uh, if you want to see it, it's a rake that, that's run from plugin directory. It's kind of um, interesting example, but not for GitHub actions. And the last one is test Ruby. That's uh, uh, 
definitely useful for almost an, any plugin. And if you want to start uh, with GitHub Actions uh, and you are maintaining a plugin, this is the most interesting part for you. It needs Rubocop, so unless Rubocop passes, uh, this uh, test is not started. Uh, here I'm, I can uh, define services, and the most interesting part is the matrix that I can uh, use more uh, more versions of uh, Ruby, more um, foreman versions that I'm testing against, most uh, more node versions, and each of these, uh, all these combinations will create. Um, this is a matrix, and every uh, every field in the matrix is one one job, and it's gonna give me one status of of the job. This can be useful for uh, testing against more Ruby reposit um, Ruby versions once we are switching from one version to, to another or we need uh, specific specific old Ruby version that we support. So that's quite easy to set up. Although you need to uh, bear in mind that uh, that organization limit and um, that you are using it up. And the last thing I want to talk about, uh, the rest you can find here, but uh, you can see the um, uh, cache here. I don't see it. Uses cache. Yeah, here. Uses action cache. And uh, this you probably want to just copy over because it's uh, not worth to know what it what it's doing. Uh, if you want to know, ask. Although I'm just gonna show you the result in uh, time and here. Webpack uh, caching. There was not a lot of difference. Although now it takes five minutes. And after the caching, here you can see, uh, yeah, mm, how it was was cached. And after the caching, it's a bit less, although not not much, because uh, npm install is still uh, still quite heavy task. But uh, it's two minutes less, not not better better fair result. Uh, what I wanted to mention is that you need you need uh, to run the run the uh, job on push to master because uh, the cache is used only from current branch or the target branch. So if I'm uh, creating pull request uh, to master branch from my own branch. It's going to be checking for the cache only in the master branch and my current branch. So if other person is uh, creating another PR from his branch, uh, our caches are not going to see each other. And they will use, both of the PRs will use only the cache that was created on master. So that's why I need the uh, need to run these these jobs on push event in the master so it would create the cache. That was it from me. Thank you, Andre. There's one one question so far I see from Maximilian. And he asks, um, do you see any similarities between GitHub Actions and GitHub CI via .gitlab-ci.yaml? Well, it's really hard to compare because uh, I think GitLab is a bit further with the whole, uh, whole integration. 
but it's quite similar in the sense that uh, you are creating all the all the jobs in in the repository so it lives in with the code but uh, for now uh, gitlab is uh, has a lot of features that uh, github is missing currently but the basics are there and they are they are quite similar you can pipe the pipe the tasks and Okay, Doc, thank you for that. And thank you for the question. Are there, we are just slightly over time. Are there any other questions? Um, I wonder if we should define some sort of guideline as to what should be running in GitHub Actions on the main form and organization so we don't hit the limitation of the 20 concurrent jobs too often. Yeah, we definitely should. And I guess we will learn when we are hitting the limit uh, quite soon, but we should take care. Uh, we should definitely use cache to speed in the GitHub actions that will use, a lot, uh, that will help obviously. But uh, I would say in, don't run any long lasting uh, jobs in GitHub Actions. Is the... mm -hmm. Sorry, Mom. Yeah, I was going to disagree with your point that we should encourage GitHub Actions. I, should, I think we should discourage them. Um, I would also say that one thing is, one difference is that in Jenkins, we run also the entire test suite of Foreman for every plugin, and that makes them slow. So if you run in GitHub Actions without, uh, the form core plugins or uh, core tests, you are comparing apples to uh, oranges, and it's not really comparable. Um, I think uh, that um, Lucas just mentioned that on discovery, it takes like a minute and a half for the form discovery test, and then another 40 minutes for the form core tests. So that's why they appear to be much slower in Jenkins. We can change that, but every time I've tried to bring it up, no plugin developer responded which is why there is no progress on this. There's no collaboration or whatsoever. Um, so I think that is the major thing we should talk about. And just a reminder that it's two minutes before the next section. I'm going to post a link in the chat now to a breakout session. If you'd like to finish up this discussion or take it a bit further or give Ev out the answer that he's been looking for, um, I would encourage you to uh, maybe go over there and 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 continue the discussion. And if not, we could maybe we could schedule another time or use some of the community demo time at some point to have a, a longer chat about this, if that would be okay with you. Sure, I will hang out in the breakout room for a while if someone wants to go further. Otherwise, I'm happy to talk it, talk it over another time. Thank you very much. I'll stop the recording now. And if um, anybody is watching this back, just please feel free to hop onto the forum and discourse and chat with us about anything that interests you in this talk. <laughs>